Hello, and welcome to another edition of Medicare Simplified with your host, Dave Miller. Welcome back to another edition of Medicare Simplified. I'm your host, Dave Miller. And today we're going to pick up where we left off with Cody. Only this time we're going to talk about strategy, how to get the most out of these crash proof products, how to create multiple lines of income, how to use them to benefit you and help you create the retirement income you so richly deserve. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off and I'll see you in a little bit. Now, I know there's a lot we can talk about in that regard, but Cody, who would you say are the prime people that need to start thinking seriously about annuities? For example, um, I told a friend of mine and I tell a lot of people, if you're going to go from company A to company B and you've been with company A five, 10 years, you got some money in there. Don't roll your 401k into the new job because you lose control and you're helping everybody else, but you're not helping yourself. Yeah. Instead, put it into one of our crash proof products and then start over at scratch. That way, everybody else's money is helping you build money. Now, that's not a bad strategy, right? Oh, no, no, not at all. And and honestly, when you first said, like, who are these built for? That's that's literally the second thing that came to my mind. I, the first thing was, you know, I always think of folks going through a retirement or seniors, right? Anybody who's in that retirement phase, you should be looking at annuities. But I'm not in retirement phase. I own two myself, you know? And what I'm telling you that for is because I took the route you were just saying. When I left my, four, my last job, I thought, man, I had been there for 10 years. I have this 401k built up and well, I'm about to start a new job. So why would I not just let my new money be aggressive, get in the 401k, do that, but now I'm going to take my old money and put it into an annuity. And the reason I did that was I wanted to create a nest egg. I wanted to know that everything I had worked for for the past 10 years was now safe. It was sitting in an annuity that I could not only see annually what was going on, I could see it daily if I really wanted to go in there and look at my account. And on top of that, every year I got a chance to reallocate it. So I had more control over it being in an annuity than I ever would have if I would have rolled it into my 401k where I would have said, hey, good luck 401k administrator, please get me a, a you know, please grow this thing for me. It's like, that that's what you're chancing at that rate. So I think your kind of suggestion to your friend like that is is great. And those are folks that we see a lot of from a client standpoint are folks who are leaving other jobs. Maybe they're terminated from another job or um, the other job just simply goes out of business. And now they're like, what am I doing with this 401k? I don't want to take it because I don't want to get taxed on it. And I know better than to do that. Um, but what do I do with it? And where do I move it? And a lot of people get pressured into just putting it to your point right into their 401k. And I'm here to tell you that you know, creating and diversifying your portfolio is always a smart thing to do. You could be 35 years old and still buy an annuity and still make a great move by doing that. And the reason that I say that is there's a simple rule of 100. If you take your age and you subtract it from 100, generally speaking, the number that's left over from there is how much you should have in adverse volatile markets, right? So if I'm 30 and I take it from 100, I now have 70% of my assets should be in risky investments, but that also means that 30% should be somewhere else. So that's the perfect person I'm talking about right now is a 30, 40 year old leaves their job. You still have plenty more years of work. You have a new 401k that's got plenty of time to get aggressive and do its own thing, but create a nest egg for that other side of things, because truly that's what they want you to do is diversify your portfolio. You shouldn't always be aggressive, 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 aggressive. And honestly, with that rule of 100, the older you get, the less you should have in aggressive, um, you know, type of investments and, and those type of um, funds. So I look at it as, yes, Dave, I think clientele that are, fresh out of a job, fresh leaving a job, terminated from a job, job closes. Those are great people to talk to about trying to get, you know, your 401k to be under your control and have a little bit more say as to how that thing is growing and what it's doing. But also it creates multiple streams of income when you're in retirement. Fantastic. So yep. you take, you went from company A to B, you put it in annuity. You're with company B. You stay with them for 20, 30 years and retire. Yep. Put that in a separate annuity. Now, you start your Social Security. You don't have to tap these till what, 73, I think it is? That is what it is, yep. And a Roth, you can tap it even later. So what you do 
is to get your social security going and maybe tap that smaller annuity that you started 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. And then you live in, you're living your life. And then later you need a little bit more income. Then you can start tapping on the bigger one, or maybe just take a one-time partial withdrawal under yep. 10% and you're living the life you want and you're comfortable. And if social security tanks, you still got two streams of income. Got it. Now, here's one that, in a way, it's kind of a pet peeve with me. Okay. Um, but, and I will meet with people, and they'll have a financial planner. And I, you know where I'm going. <laughs> and um, these guys are slick. Well, these guys and women, they're slick. They take your money, and they're making your money. Hands down, they're going to make your money. Because that's how they get paid. And their bonuses yep. are paid by the better they do for you, the better they get paid. Yep. But then they got all these little hidden fees. And when they meet, when someone meets a guy like me or you, and you're showing them how these fees are going to accumulate, how much they're getting, they're not really making versus what they could make and how much you're really paying versus what they're told to be paid. But these guys are like family. You've been with them forever. Well, you make good points, but you know what? I've done okay by him. Then in 2020, the stock market, boom. All of a sudden, they're not they're so friendly anymore. Yeah. But right now, as you said, the stock market's doing well. Yep. So people are hesitant to pull away from them because they feel like family. I think where where you and I see a lot of this from is the, the fees that build up from this, to your point, are tremendous. I mean, we see folks who are even a, like a hundred thousand dollar investment, we're seeing folks paying three, four, five grand in fees a year out of that investment. And they may have never seen their advisor for the year. That's the other thing on top of that. So on top of something like that, they're not even seeing their advisor or getting advising, you know, towards their, their actual finances. Um, uh, one of the big ones that, that we see a lot of um, is, is these hidden fees that financial planners put in there, like a, like a 12B1, right? So you have a 12B1 fee uh, that you'll see on some of these statements. And, and I couldn't recommend for you more to sit with an agent like Dave and go over these things. Give them your statement and say, what am I paying? And don't be embarrassed by it because a lot of people don't know. If something's in your statement as a 12B1, Unless you're going to school and learning that, you're not going to know what that's a fee and you're not going to know what that's for. And what's funny is that's a that's a marketing and distribution fee. That's what that is actually tabled as and considered. But they can range that anywhere they want to from that side of things. So I've seen those um, as high as like 2.753% coming out for a fee like that. And then someone goes, I didn't even know what that was for or what it's for. And even me looking at their statement, I go, I can't tell you what they were using it for, but I can tell you it's a fee and that it's 3%. I don't know what their marketing and distribution was out of your 3% they were taking, but that's what that is. And it's, it's amazing how many times you sit and you look through these statements and you see the fees. And don't get me wrong. I'm not here to say that those guys shouldn't make fees and shouldn't have that. But what I am trying to tell you is a lot of times you're overpaying in fees. And the other thing that I'm trying to point out about this is there is a time in your life where accruing your money and not having to worry about safety is great. And there is time to do that. And then there are times like 2008 when people dropped money and it took them over nine years to get back to where they last were. Nine years on an aggressive investment. So what I'm getting at is a lot of times Yes, it's great to have a financial advisor, but there's also a time in your life where there's a time of a shift and there's times where you need to be more conservative, look towards safety, look towards creating those nest eggs and those income. And a lot of times there's no need to pay fees for that anymore. If you pay fees to get aggressive and get, get wild in the market. When you start to look at safety and conservativeness, you shouldn't be paying fees anymore. And a lot of times you are going to be stretched into those fees through these products because they're just forced upon the client saying, hey, each year, even if I don't see you, I'm getting 1%, no matter what. Uh, maybe I'm getting 2% each year, no matter what, just for keeping that money on the books. And to Dave's point, each time that money goes up and the books go up, that's great for them too. So yes, they want to grow your money, but they also can lose a lot of your money and not promise you many, many safety features, many protection features, and really not many 
good income features um, that, that you could be looking for. So there's a time and a place for financial advisors. I'm never here to sit there and just, you know, crush on that. But what I am going to point out to you is be aware, be aware of what you're paying in fees, be aware of why you're paying the fees that you're paying. And then be aware that there are folks out there like Dave, who are willing to sit, help you go through your statement and review those statements and be able to kind of say to you, look, at your age now or with your goals in mind, I don't know that this is the right fit anymore. And maybe it's something else over here where we're not going to do that to you. And you're not going to pay, you know, three, four, five thousand $5,000 in fees a year. And one of the other things too, like you said, there's a time and place for everything. Yep. As you get older, it's time to start drawing back my book, or I should say my uh, logic is when you're starting out, you got your 401k, those are, there's fees in there. You have a 403b, there are fees in there. Nobody's doing work for free, but you can't avoid that. And you need to do that because your employer's putting money in, you're putting money in, it's growing. And then if you max out on that, or you want to just diversify and you're using a financial planner from Roadrunner, We Make You Money Incorporated, for example, yep. Yep. you know, that's great. But once that money gets, let's say you've got, 300,000 in there now because you've been adding money and he's making it grow. I have a cutoff point. So I hit 300,000. I'm taking half of that and I'm going to lock it up in something crash proof. I'll leave yep. the other 150 there and I'll start adding again to make that grow. Once it hits 300, I'm taking half out and putting it into another annuity. This way I'm creating multiple lines. I'm protecting some of my investment and do the same thing with a 401k, 403b. But with those, you have to wait till you're 59 and a half. But with the outside agencies, this might be a good plan. So every 10 years, maybe you're taking some money out and putting it into an annuity. Yep. Yep. And you know what? You you actually hit on a really good point there at the end that even though you're still working somewhere, let's say you're 60, 65, 70, you're still working. After you hit 59 and a half, a lot of 401k companies have now shifted to allowing you to take what they call an in-service distribution. Meaning, right to Dave's point, you got 300,000 sitting in there? Take half of that out of there. You can still contribute to it. Take three quarters out of there if you want to. Leave some in there that, that you can still contribute to and you can still get response for and still get um, you know your employer to contribute to. You can still get earnings from but get that rest of that in safety. You know, you're about to phase into retirement. Why not start protecting your retirement and start building on that? So you made a great point when you just brought up 59 and a half, because now that things are, the government is getting more and more involved in pensions and 401ks and retirements, they want people to have those options and they want people to be able to move them and not be so locked in until a certain age where it's like, okay, well, maybe I worked till I was 75. Well, now there's a lot less products available to me the older I get out in the annuity. And they don't want people to have to go through that anymore. They want you to know that, hey, you can still be working somewhere, take an in-service distribution, still keep it tax deferred. So still send it from point A to point B, you know, your employer now to wherever you're buying from an insurance company, it never touches you. It doesn't, you don't even have to worry about that money. It stays tax deferred and now it's growing over here. And if the market dumps on this 401k tomorrow, this thing's sitting really pretty and it's now protected fully. So I'm glad you said about 59 and a half because that's a great point. Um, you know, more and more we're seeing folks take in-service distributions from these. You know, I remember back in the day, double E savings bonds, CDs, <laughs> that was the way to go. Yep. Not anymore. Nope. Nope. Definitely not. And, and, you know, when you can get guarantees and rates and things out there right now, I mean, you can participate in 75% of what the monthly gain is on the S&P 500. That's a beautiful thing with complete safety. You can get guaranteed rates at five, five and a half percent right now for up to five years where you can get five and a half on your money every single year for the next five years. And if you want to take the interest that it makes you each year, take it. If you want to let it grow, it's going to grow at a compound rate. You're not going to get 1099 like you would with a CD every year. Um, there's some real advantages out there right now and really beautiful things with where the rates are. You know, I'm getting an outline going on, but I'm actually writing another book. Okay. And it's all about the poor man retiring and living large. It doesn't take a lot. Yep. In college, when I took my business classes, I wrote a term paper, $25 a week. And that was a lot of money back then. Oh, yeah. 
and you can retire and live large and not worry if social security exists or not. Because back when I did this class and I'm not giving away, but no, I didn't do it on a hammer and chisel on a rock. Okay. <laughs> but I didn't know social security was going to go the way it did. It's insolvent. You and I both know that. Yep. And nobody cares except for people like us that eventually will need it. Yep. But if you follow what Cody and I are telling you, and you work with a good agent like us, we try to be good. We, we, we try to do what's right for you because it's in both our best interests. We want to make sure that no matter what happens to Social Security in the future, if it's even there, you still live a comfortable retirement life. Yep. Protect what's valuable to you, your retirement income, because the retirement income is going to pay the bills. Keep a roof over your head. Let you take trips. Enjoy your retirement life. You've worked hard. You deserve to live in peace and have financial security. Annuities and products like what Cody and I can offer you will give you that. And the best part of all, Cody and myself, we never charge you for consultations. We don't charge you for anything. We're compensated by the companies. But we want you to live large, live with a fact that you know you got your money in a safe place. And Cody, have you thought of anything else that we might have missed in this? No, but I'll tell you what, I, I greatly appreciate you kind of giving us some time to talk about this today and, and really, you know, giving your clients that, you know, peace of mind of letting them know that these kind of things are out there and exist. You know, it's it's so important right now with where rates are, where the market is. Like I said, things are going good. But we know that when things go good for so long, there's eventually a crash to that market. And I think, you know, you're you're really exposing what's out there, um, really giving them a good idea of kind of the products and things available to them. And yeah, just thank you so much for the time today on that. I appreciate that. Cody, I'm the one who should be thanking you. <laughs> you're here to help my listeners learn. And I know you are one busy guy because trying to get a meeting with you is <laughs> quite hard. <laughs> but I do appreciate all your time, Cody. Thanks for taking some time out for us. Yes, sir. And ladies and gentlemen, guys like Cody, help me learn, help me take better care of you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate all their support. Thank you for tuning in today. I look forward to speaking with you again and learning how to do things right the first time. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Cody. If you've enjoyed this podcast and don't want to miss future episodes of Medicare Simplified with me, Dave Miller, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to check out my book, Medicare Ready, Set, Go, available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle format. If you're looking for Medicare advice, please reach out to me at dave at mig, the number four, letter U, dot net, or online at mig, the number four, letter U, dot net.